you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for taking the time to meet with me, Henry. Of course. Um, on the form, it said Gary. Is your name Gary? No, Gail. Gail, Gail. I, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, before we get started, I just want to let you know that we do record our consultations. It's on the form and everything, but we also yep. record like basically everything, all our sessions and such. Um, but good. So um, I read a little bit of your form. I saw that uh, a Doberman lab mix, I believe. Um, and then you were having issues at daycare, but um, yeah, go ahead and just fill me in on any important information uh, that you think I should know about, and then we'll go from there. <clears throat> sure. So um, you would be the third trainer for Gage. Okay. Um, I, in full disclosure, a lot of it is me. I know that I have some anxiety around her and stress. Um, she's a Velcro dog. We rescued her during the pandemic. So we've had her for now two years. Um, she's about three. We don't know for sure because, you know, it's a rescue, so we have no idea how old she is, but he initially told us she was four and the vet said she was not. She was, at the time we got her, she was, he thought she was between somewhere between 18 and 24 months. So she's between three and four right now. Um, she's super leash aggressive. Um, we've tried the different things right now. She's on a choke collar, a prong collar which seems to have lessened the aggression. She still has it, but it's more um, redirected than it was prior. But prior we had her on one of those um, gentle leads, which was making it astronomically worse for her. <clears throat> she started to go to daycare when I we first, she also came to us with heartworms. So we had to like go through that process, took her to daycare. She was fine and Rika for a while. And then something has changed there where she does get aggressive with other dogs. She's got resource issues. Like if a dog is mostly around a, a bone, she will get really aggressive. Um, she's had a couple altercations with dogs, um, protective, um, goes after them if there's a toy or a stick, but then in some, in some dogs she plays fine with. So they were managing it at the daycare. And then I'd say probably the last three to six months, but I don't know what was going on at daycare if they didn't have staff, but she was spending a lot more time in the kennel. And I don't think she likes to be in the kennel. Like when we had her in her cage, she used to like break out of it, like to the point where she was hurting herself getting out of the cage. Mm -hmm. um, so, and Totally loves humans, Enrique. I mean, we'll up your ass if you come over here, but it's just certain it's not all dogs. It's some dogs that she gets aggressive. I mean, she's, and she goes after them. I mean, she definitely gets, you know, locked onto them. And for whatever reason, whether it's the energy or whatever, she, or she's trying to protect me because I know that I'm nervous on the other end of the, this, the, the um, leash. This last incident that happened at the uh, daycare, I was out of town. My girlfriend was close to, had her, was taking her in. The guy and the dog were like right up on Gage's ass. Gage turned around and went to go after the dog, but actually like grazed the guy's leg. Like didn't bite, didn't puncture, but you know, enough where there was a red mark. And so she subsequently has been kicked out of daycare. <laughs> She's not going there anymore, but um, a little frustrating, like even when I was there, like they never told me that she was having these problems. Like they would say, like, you know, they weren't feeling her energy, but we worked with her. And then I started getting all these charges on my account, like solo time dog. And I'm like, what's going on? And they're like, oh, well, we just keep Gage in her cage all day. And I was like, that's not right for her either. Cause she's high, she's super high energy. Um, so uh, as I think more, I'm sure there's more that's gonna come out, but really just, like inconsistent aggressiveness, does that make sense? Like sometimes she'll walk past the break it and it's like nothing. Other times it's like she wants to rip the dog's face off. And it's always about a dog. It's very rarely about a human. And if a human does happen, it's only because the human was holding the dog or whatever, but she very rarely will go after a human being. <clears throat> okay. Um, for her for her incidents at daycare, yeah. um, when she had a altercations with other dogs were they all pretty much because there was some toy or some type of type of ball around yes. okay yeah um and then if there's no toys there's no balls around she's fine she's fine okay yeah. and then back to your um 
your friend who had um was 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 it the one where they were waiting in the line yeah so they were waiting in the line and the dog comes up behind her uh and i'm assuming that we get it i my friend probably was nervous and Gage felt it. So I don't know if there was a protective thing going on that Gage like turned around and like went after the dog, yeah. <clears throat> but ended up hitting, I don't know. I mean, that's what the other <coughs> trainer that we've had has said that, that she gets protective of whoever, or she's not trusting us on the, under the leash, which I don't know if it's true or not, but since we've put her on the choke collar, there is a significant difference. Think we're using it right um we can't so it gets it won't stay here and if we take another link out it's almost too tight and so we spend a lot of time on our walks like pulling up the chain pull because it's it's going down here which we both know my husband and i both know that it's not good for her so i don't know if the choke collar is right is sitting right on her but <clears throat> um she's very very stubborn she is not She'll take treats, but it does not break the concentration. Like if you put a treat in front of her, if she's having a moment where she is like going to go after squirrels and rabbits and whatnot, she's completely psychotic when she sees them. Um, but treats don't usually, no matter, we've done it all, hot dogs, you know, high, high value. Most sometimes she just, it doesn't even break her concentration. Like she's so laser focused in on that. Got it. Okay. And okay. And that's what everything squirrels and she has good prey drive right? it sounds like and yeah. then um, and it's the level Erica, it, it's a level that she's at so she's mildly activated we can quickly get her to get out of it with a treat but if she is full bore like locked on we could put a stake in front of her and she'd be like whatever yeah. <laughs> and then um for your walks she's only reactive to dogs yeah. uh some dogs, uh, some dogs you're yeah. able to pass if she doesn't care, but some dogs yeah. she's reactive to. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, and then, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, anything uh, else? Uh, my husband's definitely alpha, for sure. Like she responds, like we can take her on walks and we can, and, and we definitely have two different experiences. Okay. And I, I know it's me, like, I know I get nervous. Like if we go to a dog park and she starts to get aggressive, I have to get out because he can, he, he'll do a whistle and she'll stop. She won't listen to me. So I really do like the trainings for me to be honest, cause I know it's me and I'm anxious. Um, I just, I get nervous around her cause I don't know. I'm afraid. I don't, I don't know the tricks to control her kind of thing. <clears throat> Okay. And then, um, yeah, for the, the, for the line incident, could be a few things. It's, yeah. I mean, it's a little difficult if it's like, it wasn't you as, as well. So she could have been tense, you know, or maybe, um, it came up too quick and then, and then, you know, dogs have certain thresholds. So maybe he, maybe he let, maybe the guy didn't know that the dog was sniffing her rear and then she's like, Nope. And then she snapped. Like there could have been a, many things sure. that could happen or triggered it. But it's most likely either she was giving tension to Lisa, so she was stressed, which triggered him, or it was just the um, coming up behind them and then startles, get startled. Sure. Yeah. Um, other than that, let's see, anything else? <clears throat> no, that's, um, and, she, and she, I mean, like, she's really smart. Like, she's, she's super trainable. Like, she does. She, she has that lab part of her like she really does want to please you but then there's this stubborn streak and I don't know if that's the dobe in her or what but there's this streak in her where um it takes more than for me at least it takes more than once for her to do what I want her to do you know if I want her to sit especially when she's activated if she's not activated she'll do everything but if she's activated I have a really hard time getting her deactivated or de-escalated <laughs> and then um how much how much does she weigh she is 65 pounds. 65 pounds. And how old she was? How old was she again? So we think she's somewhere between three and four. <clears throat> okay. Okay. And then, okay, leash reactivity. Um, all her, her instances with dogs have been because of resource guarding, except the one in the line. Right. Currently on a prong collar. What's the brand of prong collar you have? 
I don't know. Gage, come here. Oh, I don't have it. I'll have to go check. I mean, I don't know. I bought it off of Amazon. <clears throat> Got it. Okay. Um, and then. He's got like a really thin neck. I yeah. Know what I'm yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Some so dog. Like, it's just like that. Yeah. <laughs> as long I mean, as long as it's like everything, both sides are even with the prongs. I, you know, we only go by if if they're not even, then just like minus one or add one. Uh, okay. add one. But um, yeah, that's not an issue. And then for the resource guarding, it's just with dogs, not with humans. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, anything else? Nope, that's about it, my darling dog. <laughs> um, if there are no dogs and no like squirrels or anything, how she how does she usually act on a walk? Completely calm. It oh, was like, oh. and we, when we put that prong collar on her, it was like she her whole personality changed. It was it was crazy. Like by your side, she does pull a little bit, but like you can course correct her the minute you like just do a little like a flick of your wrist she'll stop. It was crazy. I mean, it was like, I don't know if she's been on it before, but it was a completely different dog. Yeah. <laughs> the reason why you see such a big difference so quickly. Yeah. Because prong collars um, are like a physical tool. They offer like physicality to the dogs and physicality okay. is a dog's language. So okay. like, he doesn't want someone touching her ball. She can't. She can't use words. She can't say off or leave it or no. Right. She has yeah. to result into biting. Um, <clears throat> so what you're essentially doing with the prong call is you're biting her, right? Okay. So you're able to understand. Okay, that was uncomfortable, right? Because um, from from our training, dogs learn best with negative experiences, okay. right? Negative, negative experience would be you're going to pull, you're going to get the tension. Okay, didn't like that, won't do it again. Right. But then there are going to be some instances where something is worth the pressure, the pressure. Like the squirrels or the dogs. And by then she's at a 10, and then your strongest yank could be a seven. So you're never going to be able to override the brain in that moment. Um, the reason why we find that they learn best with negative experiences, because it's the same thing with humans. Um, you know, we'll use the example like, have you ever touched a hot stove? Yes. Like, would you ever do it again? No. No. <laughs> uh, right. it's a one and done type thing. <clears throat> right. um, so that's what you find as well with dogs as well is that they progress better with these experiences. Okay. Uh, so I think the issue mostly is what's coming from Gage is here is just the, um, she seems a little overstimulated, right? Um, yeah. The yeah. I wouldn't label her like aggressive or anything okay. um it's just to the point where like kind of just adding more control and then since it's just the res resource guarding like balls and stuff i'm not too worried about it because it's not like she's just going after dogs for no reason because there's like on leash reactivity and there's like off leash stuff like difference like that and with on leash reactivity because sometimes owners will say my dog is great off leash, doesn't care about dogs, unless there's a ball, obviously. But yeah. then when my dog is on the leash, every dog is a threat. <clears throat> and the re and there, it could be because it's like a territorial thing where she sees um, your husband as more of like, a, okay, if I see a dog coming, my, this guy's got it, I don't need to worry about it. It could be that. Yeah. Um, okay. It could be that um, she's just getting stressed and you know, dogs only have so many responses to certain things. So like it's, it'll be like fight, flight, avoidance or submission, right? So when she sees a dog coming her way, she can't, she's not gonna submit because she's not there yet. She can't avoid because she's attached to a leash. She also can't run away because she's attached to a leash. So the yeah. only response that's left is fight. So that's where you see a lot of dogs become different when they're on a leash and they're off leash because when they're off leash, they can run away if they need to. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, but, um, and then, like you said, it could also be that, you know, maybe we're communicating to her. Um, we're kind of telling her that, hey, I'm worried. And she's like, well, what are you worried about? Oh, there's a dog right there. Could it be the dog? Um, yeah. they, they can start to like associate things like, you know, why does mom always start to like choke up on a leash when these dogs come around and then it gets them stressed and then they'll explode and do their whole thing. Yeah. Uh, but um, <clears throat> it sounds like you're on the right path with the prong collar. Yeah. 
but um, there are certain things where prong collar can't fix. So like I said before, if she's at a 10, it's gonna be very difficult because the dogs are able to override prong collar. Um, so like our bully breeds, funny enough, Labradors and Golden Retrievers will override prong collars just because they're so happy-go-lucky, so wiggly. They yeah. have a time perceiving threat, so they're just like, they're still wiggling after it. Um, yeah. But um, with prong, like you, you can get a lot of improvement. You can teach heel, stay, sit down, come place. You can teach all these commands. Um, it's not gonna get you off these control as well. So like you have a lot of control when she's on a leash, uh, she's on a leash with no distractions. But then yeah. if you take her to a dog park, once you take that leash off, you've lost all control. There's no way to communicate to her. So like if someone, let's say there's no balls, it's great. Then someone comes and just brings out a ball and starts playing fetch. Then it's like, oh, well, now we have to leave because I can't, I can't control her from this distance. If she goes for the ball, there's no way to stop her. Right. Uh, um, but other than that, everything I'm, is everything I'm saying making sense? Yes. Yeah. Um, and then do you like, is it, I am not familiar with the dog breed. I mean, I've read a couple of things, but like there is, is this what, like, She's uber loyal. I noticed that and protective sometimes. <sighs> yeah. Um, a, Doberman, a Doberman mixed with the lab. I picture a very like tough and high energy dog. Um, she is, so I mean, what she does too at the dog park, I've noticed she wants to run constantly. And so she will almost like not pick a fight, but kind of like antagonize someone to chase her mm -hmm. and if they don't do it that's when she gets a little like I don't want to say aggressive but she kind of gets like she won't stop she's got that mentality right like chase me chase me chase me chase me and then it's like the dogs get pissed off because <laughs> they're like stop right yeah <laughs> really uh, yeah I mean personally I'm, I'm not um what is it because that kind of ties into the overstimulation as well. Because once you yeah. start to like uh, get through the brain and kind of have more control over her, you're going to start to see her become more settled because with overstimulated dogs, which is very common, um, owners would say like, I take my dogs on like five walks a day. Uh, they're on the treadmill. I play fetch. I do all these things, but they're still like wanting to do something more when I get home. Yeah. It's a sign of overstimulation because yes, you can exercise the dog physically but mentally they're not getting um they're not getting that exercise so then they're just constantly being wired all day so there's, yeah. there's they don't know how to turn off they don't know how to tire out the brain so then they're just going to be going like they're just still going to be wanting more um which is it sounds like that's what she needs she needs a yeah. job mm -hmm. to do uh while you're on your walks to give her something to basically um, be mentally drained about. So then you'll start to see her become more calm. It's gonna be like a similar thing that you saw with the prong collar where you're like, whoa, she's, it's like, it's definitely affecting her. You're gonna see another change as well. Once you start to be more specific and um, I guess when she knows what to do while she's on these walks, instead of being on like patrol mode, like looking after the squirrels or looking for dogs. Stuff like Which that. is what she's doing. Like the minute she gets out there, she's like, that's a great way to look at it. Like she's constantly, we say that she's on guard the minute she gets out there. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's another sign of <clears throat> overstimulation is that they're just, they're, they can't settle. They're just like always, what's going on? What's going on? Who's right. there? Like she's always looking at me because she's like constantly scanning the street and you're like, oh my God, like it's not, it's and not, like you shorten the walks because she's like, so even though she's standing next, walking next to you, she's, you can see she's just scanning for a squirrel or a dog or whatever. She's, you're right. I think she's mentally not stimulated. And I often wondered that if the dog daycare was making it worse for her, like it was making her more activated and she would come home like a crazy woman. Like it was insane. Like I noticed behavior, the longer she was going, the worse her behavior started to get. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it just depends how the daycare was ran. So like yeah. since she was able to like practice resource guarding there and getting the fights, then probably not the best day because before our daycare, there are no balls, no toys, no treats allowed in the play pens just because we, we always assume a dog is going to be a resource guard. So we just play it safe. We just don't do that. Okay. Um, but yeah, it, it sounds like she was just getting frustrated at the end with the kennel stuff. She's getting pent up. She has no way to release her um, energy or anything like that. So when she gets home, that's when she's finally free and then you're going to her 
escalate with reactivity because she's so frustrated. So that's that makes sense as well. Okay. Um, um, okay. And then you're familiar with how we train and the tools we train, like with the e-collar, correct? Correct. Um, what do you, what do you know about e-collars? I watched some of your videos, and okay. at first I was like, "Oh God, an e-collar is gonna," pop. but I've learned through watching a lot of your stuff and reading that there really are. It's just another another training app opportunity for them that it doesn't really like hurt them. <clears throat> is a course like I think for her and we go because I think she gets so activated I'm at the point now that I think that might be a, another option for us because she does choke herself out like there's times where she has pulled through the choke cord like you said they get like and she's yelping and that doesn't feel good either right so <clears throat> yeah I, and, I don't have a ton of experience with the e-collar <clears throat> um and then that yelping just so you know, the, um, it's not so much because of the prong collar, but yeah. just she's frustrated. She's just both blessing her frustration. Okay. So like, on a regular walk, no distractions. When you give her like a correction or something like that, she's fine. But then once yeah. it's cool, a dog comes to play and you're trying to correct her, you're going to see an escalation because she's getting more frustrated. It's like now this thing's bothering me. The dog's over there. All this stuff is building up. So she's going to be barking, yipping, yelping, all that, which is normal. Yeah. So you don't really see okay. Um yeah, but um, e collar, um, I think will definitely help you in this situation just because, like I said, um, looks like she's overriding the prong collar now. Um, e collar is, um, I mean, the old school term is shock collar, but just we don't call it that anymore. It's, it's, that's more of like a, a word you use if you're talking like, talking like, uh, in a, talking about the e collar in a negative way. Yeah. Uh, but usually we call it remote collar, remote training, e collar training, whatever, but, but like kind of terms like that. Um, it's electric, yes, but it's not electricity flowing through the dog's body. It's just the contraction. So it's literally like a, a strap with a little box and two contact points. Whatever those two points are touching is what it'll be contracting. Um, so to describe the feeling, um, it's similar to like a, like a TENS unit where like physical therapists and or like- Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, it's just like that. It's just like a, almost just like a, a pulse. I right, to describe okay. it like a pulse. Um, but the same, like, you know, clients are like, that's what we've had, um, uh, clients who are physical therapists and they'll feel it or like, we'll explain to them and they're just like, oh, that's what the feeling is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They're, yeah. They're, um, but, um, the brand we use is called Dogtra and Jesse has been using this brand for more than half his career. And okay. this is the brand that has gotten the best results from his dogs and where the dogs respond best to um we have a, um levels of stimulation so we have one to 127 so the maximum okay. 27 in the case of ones um you might see that there are other brands out there that have eight levels yeah. it's not that we have 100 more levels it's just that their eighth level and our 127th level are the same like they feel exactly the same um so when, you, when you're using that eight level D collar, you're gonna be struggling there because what if number five is getting um, gauged to overreact or yell too much power, but then four, it's not enough. Then you're stuck. Versus right. um, dog, uh, if 40 is too low, 50 is too high, you can go to 45 or 42, 46. Yeah, but you have a range. Correct. <laughs> um, what else? <clears throat> They're waterproof. You get a mile long range with this as well. So you get that distance. So when you're playing fetch with her and something, you know, there's a risk of potential resource guarding, you can communicate to her from a mile if that's how far you are to the situation or just disengage from the ball or whatever it is. Um, waterproof, rechargeable, they last long, very simple, very easy to use. You just have your dial, your button, and then just go straight up to 127 if you need it, or, you know, it's just straight. What I mean by that is there's some brands that go that have like three levels, low, medium, low, or like medium high, they a bunch of different stuff. And it's just too much to switch around. So yeah, we don't we're not a fan of those types of e-collars. Um any questions about the e-collar or the system itself? Okay. Nope. So um how this would help gauge or what we need to do first for her is the first thing we would do is teach her the heel exercise. Uh, if you've seen the videos, you've probably seen lesson one is usually heel. 
Um, our version of heel is very strict. It's walk with me, stay with me, and sit when I stop. So when you take five steps, gauge, gauge is to take five steps. When you take 10, she takes 10. And then when you come to a stop, she's to automatically sit with her shoulder parallel to your leg with a loose leash in any environment. I don't care what's going on. Dogs, children running, balls getting thrown around. It's that strict. <clears throat> so we're teaching that class one um, to have her understand what the e-collar is. Um, so sometimes clients or owners think that e collar training is dog does bad behavior and you blast them on the maximum level. That's not yeah. how it works. She needs to first understand what it is. And we need to let her know that, hey, you're the one in control of it. You turn it on, you turn it off, right? Because Gage doesn't right. know that you're the one pressing the button because there's nothing attached to you in the feeling, right? It. Yep. So it's very um, non-confrontational. You know, there's no, she's not to get personally, so it's not gonna affect your relationship with her. Um, she's not gonna look at you as like, why are you shocking me? It, it doesn't happen because she yeah. doesn't know what So you're gonna be thinking it's like the universe. I think one client said, big brother's yeah. speaking to her. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Um, but um, uh, again, teaching her how e collar works, she has control of it. Uh, we're also going to be accomplishing um, your reactivity, right? Because it's not so much about the obedience for our heel, it's the, the discipline and like psychology behind it. That's what matters. Mm -hmm. So the idea is if your heel is good and it's very important to her and concerning. Right. So when she's like, it's like, you know, you touch the hot stove, you get burned. Right. Right. If, if we have that mentality in her, technically, nothing else should matter. Right. Because right. she's your dog, she's going to be thinking, is it worth it though? Because this is, this is real. This is physical. This can actually, actually touch me. But that dog is like a block away. Like, is that going to affect me or is this going to be more important? So right. she's, she's going to have to have to like second guess herself. Like, is it worth it? Probably not. Right, and she'll move forward right. if, if we're still struggling. So like, there's like a spectrum. So like first, when we're dealing with reactivity, if there's any human reactivity, which is something she doesn't have, that's the first thing that goes away. And that's something we don't even have to address on its own. It just goes away. We teach heal and it, there's no human reactivity anymore. It just goes away. Okay. After human reactivity, it's calm dogs, then it's skateboarders, scooters, rollerbladers, um, bikes, and then it's, other reactive dogs and then it's at the end is the one you can't predict which is you turn the corner there's a dog there that's kind of how we make progress okay well maybe we teach you heal and then you're like Enrique, it was great this week was great she was um ignoring some dogs but there are still a few dogs that maybe would look at her and their tails wagging when she would blow up yeah. right um, which is normal for the first week and then we're like okay let's put her in situations for our Put her in a controlled context where we're increasing the energy level of like the environment seeing you know putting her under stress to see you know and just working her through that and then hopefully see what, how it progresses outside uh, but um again heal teaching her how e works uh, we're addressing your reactivity just because of the discipline structure we're applying behind the command heal um what else and this is also going to be tackling the overstimulation because this is it's very mentally tiring for a dog for a whole entire walk to be here, the whole walk, right? Bye. So you're gonna start to see her become more relaxed because now we are able to communicate her, communicate to her and tell her, hey, this is your job from now on and you're gonna do this job. And then she's gonna be like, okay, you might see her a little stressed just because now she's, we're kind of on her level now. Yeah. Right? And we're communicating to her. So it's just gonna be like, okay, gotta do this, gotta, Ignore the dogs, gotta do you know all these things, and then you're gonna come home to a more um, tired dog as well. Um, that's like on the side thing. Um, any questions about that? No, you're speaking my husband's language. He'd love to have the dog walk next to him. <laughs> um, any questions in general? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So, like I said, we teach you feel, see what it fixes. And then we'll start mm -hmm. to move on to like other things. So um, your priority sounds like it's the walking, and the dog reactivity. Mm -hmm. uh, she's able to make friends, right? Without any uh, balls, it sounds like. Um, yeah. But there are times when could, I've noticed like she'll just snap for some reason. Like she'll be out playing. She, we have friends that have two Labradors. And then all of a sudden it's like, she just goes like, 
she's playing, playing, playing. And then it's like almost like she's overstimulated. And then she starts to become, we call her a dick. Like she becomes a dick. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have to stop playing. That's, that's common. So like at, at, it, um, for like dogs who are playing, like if you're here at our daycare, we, we, we let them play. Like for our play groups, we let them play. But if it's like these two dogs that are just constantly playing, like like because our play groups go for an hour, and if like by twenty minutes they're still playing, we're gonna cut it. We're gonna stop it. Like, hey, you need to take a break. Um, mm -hmm. This sounds normal, especially since she's an overstimulated dog. Um, something she has a little bit of frustration in her. So when she's yeah. playing, and then she starts to get rougher, the other dog starts to get, starts to get rough. Yes. Uh, it just escalates, and then boom, like. Oh, yes. not playing anymore. You can what you can do kind of now, and then it, you'll see the the like the snap happen. So then she's yep. like, "I'm not a fan of this," anymore. or the dog snaps. You know, like, I'm not a fan. So she snaps back, and then it's a whole thing. But yep. um, <clears throat> um, that um, I can also give you that. Um, what is it? Um, let's say she's at the dog park. She's getting escalated. You from a distance are able to communicate to her like, "Hey." knock it off calm down relax yeah it's that the daycare, if we have a dog that is like a rough player and they're e-collar yeah. trained we'll put an e-collar on them once they start to get too escalated i mean we don't need to do anything we're just pressing a button and they'll stop playing for a little bit they'll like kind of like rethink what they're doing and then <laughs> slowly start playing again and then they'll be more calm about it um so e can definitely help you at dog park controlling her um in a sense of like how she plays with other dogs to kind of like limit her um, yeah. energy there. Um, any other questions? I think that's it. <laughs> so for, are you looking to, for her to have like any other, um, like are you interested in any other commands? Like, you know, we can teach place, um, there's recall, there's stay, there's sit, there's bound, there's a lot of other things we can teach with e-collar. Are there, are there anything else that you're, you're kind of wanting she just yeah just recently she wasn't before i don't know what's going on she's now jumping on people she wasn't before so if we could do like a stay when people come in the house okay. um and this is and we get, again it just started to happen the last couple of weeks she's never jumped on anyone all of a sudden like people are coming in and she and she's 65 pounds and she's she's tall so if she jumps up i mean she's She's got a lot of dope in her, so she's in her face. And like, literally, I'm not kidding, like a week and a half ago, this just started. We're like, what are you doing? <laughs> got it. Okay, we'll definitely cover that. <laughs> got it. And then um, with e we, we like to, because um, it can give you off-use control and it gives you an off-use recall. So we like to add that uh, to the program for you guys, just because if it can give you this, this uh, like additional thing because that's what it's meant for off these stuff we'd give it to the owners so they can use it to the full advantage and all that stuff there okay um, yeah, we do have we have a, a second home up in wisconsin and it's not we didn't do a there's no fence and so we'd love to be able to let her out and have a recall back and not have to work and it's wooded so you can imagine there's squirrels and have all kinds of crazy stuff but right now we tether to a leash which just creates a whole bunch of other anxiety for her but would love to be able to have that recall for her where we just can be on the leash and we don't have to worry about her <clears throat> or off leash, excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Um, and then um, some common questions owners have asked um, from the, with the e-collar is that, um, you know, after I do my program, is it like she graduates from the e-collar? Does it come off? Is it on all day, 24 seven? Or how does it, when is yeah. it? Yeah. Um, so on your walks, after you complete the program, it should always be on, right? Mm -hmm. It's not that we're always using it, right? We shouldn't, we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be pressing the button all the time in the future because that should be done in the beginning. All the hard work is done, and then later on, it should be start to kind of decrease of how often we're using e-collar. But the idea is that it's just there, just in case. So, like, <clears throat> let's say um, you know, prong collars sometimes break, sometimes they fall apart, sometimes we're in a rush and we don't put it on right. Um, but let's say, you know, a car backfires, she breaks a prong, a collar, and she's running away. Or, you know, we've heard a lot of horror stories where owners get pulled to the ground and stuff happens. So if she's in flight mode, which is when a dog is thinking kill or be killed, they're running for their lives. Sometimes, you know, 
days come might not work because she's again thinking I'm gonna die. She's running for a life, right? So then you have your remote and your e-collar on her to override the brain in flight mode and then make her do the 180 and come back to you. So in situations like those, we recommend having the e-collar on just because we can't predict what's gonna happen on this walk, right? Uh, off leash, you definitely want to have it on, whether she's in an enclosed environment or in um, on an enclosed environment. You definitely want to have it on. Just let's say, um, um, you know, you're playing in like your own section. You're playing ball with her, mm -hmm. right? Although it's it is not a bad idea to bring a ball in um, in a dog park, but let's say you're playing ball and like the the park the park is big enough for your own space. Yeah. And then let's say you're playing ball and then another dog like books it and sees your ball and then they're gonna meet like this, right? You have yeah. your e to cut her, right? Cut her off in mid chase of the ball and make her come back to you to avoid a fight happening over there. Whether it be in close area or on a close area. Um, it's happened to a client before, you know, she was in her own space, the dog came by, e car stopped the dog mid chase and then she was able to kind of control the situation to avoid a fight. Um, another situation was clients for Jesse's was doing a, a walk near Lincoln Park and they turned the corner and there's a coyote there and their dog was off leash and had great, really intense prey drive. So then immediately got the dog under control, went the other way. But if he didn't have the e-car on in that moment, who knows what would have happened there. Who knows what happened, yeah. yeah. Um, in the home, if it's just you and your husband or you know she's great with people, except maybe the jumping, um, then you don't really need it on. Okay. Um, so you're gonna have guests come over and let's say it's like, um, you know, um, children and you're, you're, you think she's gonna jump on them. What you can do is you can collar her up 30 minutes prior, address whatever that is needing to be addressed. And then once you find that maybe she's, maybe she just needs a couple like corrections or communication um, in the beginning and then she's fine after that. Then you can take it off or you can keep it on just in case something happens where like you need more control or you need to yeah. keep stop from jumping again you have that tool there for the guests to stay um and the crate doesn't matter um if she needs it or like bedtime she doesn't need to wear it and do you, you don't do the choke collar at the same time right is it just the, the e-collar or do you do both um for you and gage being a doberman lab mix and 65 pounds i recommend still having it because if you're in a situation where you're turning the corner as a dog there, you have a flat collar, prong collar is gonna give you the most control for the moment, so that it gives you time to react to your remote then. Okay. Uh, so I recommend keeping it on. You don't need it. It's not needed for the training or anything like that, but looking at her size and everything, I recommend it. And, um, but um, it's not, don't think of it as like overkill or anything like that. If anything, it's like the ultimate, the ultimate control for you and your dog there. Okay. Um, any other questions? No. Um, so were you were you looking into like um for program wise, were you thinking of like a board and train in person, daycare train or uh, you have yeah. she's only had one in person and it was fine, but I really think she needs a more structure. And it was only for a couple of weeks. So I think in person would look best for us. Good. Um, you guys yeah, can I, see you guys can see us too, because I'm I mean a couple of times like the trainer's been like training me. <laughs> like <laughs> You know, you're holding too tight, you're too tense, like, and I'm, I'm not even aware I'm weak, and I am. I think it's just the minute I get her on her leash, I think I automatically get tensed up, and she mm -hmm. probably feels that. <clears throat> and then that's normal to see. A lot of owners have that habit of like arms are up here when they're yeah. walking on. <laughs> but um, yeah. no, with e collar, it's going to be you're going to find that it's um, way more simpler, right? Because prong collar is a little more nuanced with like. How you hold, like you know, like yeah. the, the corrections, the timing, and um, communicating with the loose. There, it's it's a little more specific. Um, but with the e collar, you're gonna find it's way like all you're doing is you're pressing a button, right? Every everything in this world now is button based. Your elevators now you gotta press a button for turning on a car, so it's just right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's better for the human. What we find with e collar training, um, and also. Um, for in person, that's great you're doing that. Um, for e collar training, it's it's very transferable. So okay. we mentioned earlier how your husband has more control or has more of um, a um, disciplinary is more of a disciplinary figure to gauge. <clears throat> e collar, um, 
let's say we start working with her, right? Whoever goes first, usually, if we're dealing, if we're working with more than one person, yeah. Um, the person that goes first does all the hard work because they're going first. Um, and then once they, we get like, you know, we're trying to make progress within that first person, they hand the dog up to the second person. And then when they work with the dog, they're, they're, they're most likely thinking, okay, I gotta do all this over again, but they don't. Because okay. let's say, you know, using the videos, uh, we have what's called a working number. Let's mm -hmm. say we have her number to be 30, right? She's most responsive to 30. When you press a button on 30, it's still 30. When your husband presses the button, it's still 30. So there's no like, he's right. stricter than her or she's stronger than him or anything like that. It's 30 is 30 for everyone, right? right. Yeah. Um, so that's like another wonderful thing about ECOS that how transferable it is there. Um, so for in-person, um, it's all verbal instruction. We are coaching you. We don't touch the dog at the end of the day. It's, we know how to train a dog. It's the, the owners who are gonna be walking the dog at home. Um, we have the six week program, the okay. nine week program and the 12 week program. Everything okay. from what I'm hearing so far, you're most likely gonna be, I'm recommending you to choose the six week program. Okay. Um, the reason why I'm doing six week is because your priority is mostly like behavior and leash walking, right? And so okay. if you like, I kind of want more commands, like I want her to lay down, not move for two hours or place, go to your bed and not move for three hours. That's more like the nine week program, okay. uh, but bare bones from what you're from. If you just want, I just want to get this done and over with six weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah. So two classes heal. Uh, the third class can be like, uh, let's see what's kind of happening here and what needs to be fixed. Um, two classes recall, um, which is already four. And then we can teach like a stationary command depending on how everything's going. Or okay. we can do an in-home session where we're teaching you how how to let guests enter your home while, she, while having her under control. Okay. Um, so I think the six weeks would be great. Um, it gives you enough wiggle room as well for her. Yeah. Um, and then let's say you do the six week program and then you're like, wow, like I wanna learn more. I wanted to be like, like, um, oh. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, a little puppy happened to grab her bag of kibble from the top. I don't know how she did that. Um, <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, let's say you do the 60 program and you're like, wow, I, I, this is great. I didn't know she can, you know, because sometimes owners don't think they can like get far in training. But let's say you're like really happy with what you're saying and you want to learn more. You can always buy more classes. So we have a three week program. So if you want to learn more, you can get a three week program if that's something that interests to you. Um, it's an hour once a week. So for example, this is just okay. an example. It could be Mondays at 11 a.m. six okay. times for an hour. We teach you one topic at a time just so we're not overwhelming you with information. Um, on our calendar, you get six slots plus one. So you technically get seven slots on our calendar. That plus okay. one is just in case, um, you know, life happens. So like, you, you know, you right. get sick or whatever, you yeah. still have a, reser a reserved slot for you. But once you've used that extra slot, you'll have to wait to get back in the time to continue the training there. Okay. Um, everything's recorded. So if like, you know, someone misses class, they can rewatch the video on YouTube. It's, it's um, great to catch up there. Um, what else? Any questions about the No. So I just go on, the, do I just go online and like do all this? <clears throat> How do I? Yeah, so um, Tina, my assistant, she's gonna yeah. reach out to you and forward you the information we talked about. So she's gonna send you the programs I recommended to you. The okay. e card I recommend. Um, the e card that's technically recommended, or I would want Gage to be on, is sold out currently. So it's okay. called 1900 S Black Edition. Because okay. there's a 1900 S Regular, there's a 1900 S Wetlands, like a camo version. But she needs, she's going to want, you're going to want the black edition. So if, if it's possible, if you can find it somewhere, because on, on Dogtra, um, oh wait, I think on Dogtra, you're able to buy it, like the actual website. Um, but on Amazon, Dogtra. Can you see, yeah, can you spell that? It's D-O-G. T-R-A. T-R-A. And you said she needs the 1900? Yes, black edition. Black. Okay. That's the important part because you're going to see that there's a 1900 as regular. And okay. that um, 
you're gonna see like like the, we we already know like I already know from her like we don't use that one that model because it's it it's um the regular one provides a more like sharper okay. sensation so then the dog tend to overreact with that versus the black edition it's stronger but it's more duller so then there's okay. more, it's more smoother with how the dogs are reacting to that. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> So you can purchase that on your own or, um, you know, um, again, we, we, we used to sell them here, but then they're out of stock, so we don't have any currently. Okay. Uh, um, so program, prices, e-collar, a form, they need to be signed. Once the form is signed and yeah. agreed to, then we can go ahead and begin the billing and booking process where we can go and get you guys scheduled. Okay, uh, cool. You have the option to work with Jesse as well. Um, okay. So this 135 for your consultation will still go towards your program. Um, okay. It feels more like the uh, like the actual like because you're you're dealing with reactivity. Um, he handles more like the like the human aggressive or dog aggressive dogs. Uh, yeah. But um, this is I mean I've handled before. It's just it's pretty simple. Um, okay. so simulation there. Um, okay. If you want to work with Jesse, you have that option. You'll just let Tina know that. Um, okay. But uh, other than that. Any other questions? Nope, I think you covered it. Thank you so much. Cool. Um, if, any, if anything comes up, um, feel free to email me and I'll get back to you. So if any questions arise about the system or the training, let me know. And then other than that, um, yeah, just keep an eye out for Tina. Uh, she'll get back to you today or tomorrow. Great. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Of course. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Okay, bye.